So the journey is underway, 25 laps for the women here in the Zatapec 10 for 2013. Of course, we need to keep an eye out for the qualifying standards for the Commonwealth Games. 32-10 is the A, 33-20 is the B, and of course, if you can get the B standard and first finish first across the line tonight, you've just booked your ticket for the Glasgow Commonwealth Games. So if you're looking quite bunched down the back straight again, Susie Powers joining me for the, the 10,000 metre championship. It doubles as the national championship and indeed the Victorian championship. And at this stage, Susie, it just looks like the, the ladies are starting to just feel themselves out. No one's looking to make an early burst at all, but it's, it's Linda Spencer that's at the front of the stage. The big favourites are at the front. And if, if you're favoured for a race like this, you'd want to keep yourself out of trouble and be sitting right close to the front of the field, Susie. Yeah, even this early on, they, they can be sitting back a little bit. Um, there's a long way to go yet. They've just got to stay comfortable and you've got to feel out the other competitors and what they're doing and where they're, they're running. As long as you're running safe and you're not too crowded there on the rails, they should feel, be starting to just sort of iron themselves out and start to feel comfortable. Now, a, a race like this, of course, they've got to really pace themselves nice and, and easily into this race. We'll be looking to hit that, that split nice and early on that first lap round or you take a couple of k's to build into it to start to hit onto that that 10,000 meter target pace that you'll be after oh most of these most of these girls will be know the pace that they've got to run already without looking at any times they'll they would have done plenty of this type of uh, threshold work during their training sessions so starting off and knowing that they've got to run quite solid for over 32 minutes is going to be um, they're pretty well used to it so they're still in early days and still feeling out, um, getting themselves into a rhythm at the moment. I suppose it's, when, it's interesting when you look at this group, we've got a couple of 3,000 metre steeplechasers that are trying to step up in distance. We've got a couple of marathon runners that are trying to step down. It's the difference between running road, running track. Do you think they'll, they'll notice it much? How do you think their training changes when they're, when obviously Jess, she's, she's looking at marathons next year and then she has to drop down and run a 10,000 metre on the track? Uh, I think this race comes at a good time of the year where you can um, slip it in and it's really good for both um, your, your strength and um, just part of your training program. And a, a lot of these girls will, will use that as part of, part of the training. And it, you don't, I don't think the training changes too much uh, because you're in a bit of a strength phase at this time of the year. So we see them, the athletes will move into the stretch. They'll take 16 laps remaining when they move through the start finish area again. And Jess Trengrove now just starting to work her way to the front. Linda Spencer just dropping back. And as they go through 16 laps remaining, we're going to head back shortly to the infield for the 70 metres in the VAL event. Sometimes um, the aiming for aiming for a lap run is actually a good thing. Um, it'll keep them girls motivated to keep the pace pace on and keep pushing it. Um, so yeah, they've got a bit of a gap now until they reach the, the next person. So it's Tringove and Chapel, 13 laps remaining, back to Palm. Spencer, they've moved past our lapped runner at the rear of the field. Looks like Emma Craft of the Northern Territory. Victoria Mitchell moves through to collect 13 laps remaining. Back there to Millie Clark, who's starting to pick up some ground there from 7th in the 6th on Casey Wood, the South Australian. So still Trengove and Chapel, and again we see down the back straight, Nikki Chapel just moving up to the shoulder of Jess Trengove, and then Jess just stretches out again. It's almost a little bit of a, maybe a bit of a game for me at the front end of the field, Susie, between Chapel and Trengove. Trengove stretches out, Chapel comes back, and then Trengove goes again. Yeah, I think um, Nikki's probably just testing her a little bit to keep her honest with the pace. They're still on their 79 second pace, so she's keeping it quite consistent. And we look at the personal best. On paper, Nikki Chapel has proven herself at this distance to be the faster athlete, 32, 29, 92. She recorded that time back in 2009 when she was fifth at the Zatapec between behind Eloise Welling. Indeed, there was a great sprint finish for second and third between Lisa Waitman and Lara Tamsit on that occasion. Jess Trengo, well, she's looking for a first win at the Zatapec. Indeed, Chapel is two. Palmer, best place, is third. So between this leading trio on the track, we're going to see a new Zatapec champion and a maiden Zatapec championship for, for one of these three, which is 
very enticing prospect for them. But it's still Trengove and Chapel, and it's really starting to become a, a racing two as they start to test each other out down the back straight. 12 laps remaining. So they're battled. And the battle continues. 700 metres to travel in the 10,000 metre championship of Australia. It's Trengove and Chapel. Of course, we mentioned before, Chapel holds the superior best time over the distance. Trengove has finished higher up in the overall rankings before. As we see Chapel just move up to the shoulder there at Trengove down the back straight. We're now moving to 600 metres from home. And it's still Trengove Chapel past the fans at the city end of the stadium here. And Susie, was this a tradition that was in place when you won your titles back in 2001, 2012? The fans up close having the support, support right near you? I don't think it was that close. <laughs> um, that, that's re that really helps. Um, that, that's a fantastic thing to have out right up near the, near the athletes, both for the spectators and for the athletes. It really gives them a lot of encouragement. Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to hit one lap remaining in the Zatapec 10 for 2013, and Nikki Chappell has pressed down on the accelerator and starting to stretch out the long run for home. Jess Trengove, can she respond? The marathon representative at the London Olympics, Nikki Chappell's really put down the hammer and starting the motor. We've got to watch the clock as they make their way around the track. The time we want, 33.20. If she can pass inside that time, she'll confirm her birth. But ladies and gentlemen, Nikki Chappell down the back straight, the 25th lap of a 10,000 metre journey. And it looks like she's just started afresh, Susie. She's really put the hammer down. Into a bit of a 500 rep, I think. She's, um, yeah, she's looking very comfortable, and I think she was ready to uh, take off. Well, it's Chapel 200 metres from home as some of the athletes continue to get the bell. It's Chapel past the fans there at the city end of Lakeside Stadium, really winding it up and shifting through the gears, looking for a maiden victory over 10,000 metres in the national title. Her best place was fifth place before she came to this venue in 2013. And Nikki Chapel has bided her time and it clocks the clock. If it's inside 33.20, she's off to Glasgow. Nikki Chapel up the home stretch in front of the home crowd the clock ticks through she's going to Glasgow 32 56 Nikki Chapel's off to the Commonwealth Games she's posted the B standard taking the win but ladies and gentlemen hold your applause Jess Trengove a sensational run she too will finish inside that B standard she's off for the marathon but what a gutsy run that was she dictated terms Chapel pipped her at the last post as we see Millie Clark now making her way down to the finish line the New South Wales in a debut over 10,000 metres at the Zatapec will round out the podium and take the bronze medal. Susie, that's such an impressive run for Millie. She started from eighth and she's worked her way into third place. Yeah, that's a fantastic run. She, uh, she looks beautiful when she's running too, so I think that's someone to watch in the future. As we see Linda Spencer cross in fourth place to round out the top four. Tara Palm's about to come down now to round out the top five in the Zatapec 10, but... You mentioned about them being strength runners, Susie. Did you think Nikki had a sprint like that in her? She sat back for such a long time, but when she kicked, there was no turning back. Um, yeah, it was nice to be able to uh, work together. I tried to share the lead a little bit. Um, I know it's not very fun being out there by yourself, but yeah, I think it worked out well in the end. I had a bit of a finish, so. What event are you targeting? Are you going to target the marathon, uh, or are you thinking of um, or doing something different? Um, to be honest, I'm not really sure at this stage. Moscow did temporarily put me off the marathon, I have to say, but um, <laughs> I think I could probably do another one. <laughs>